let us start this lecture uh, just recapitulating what we have uh, discussed in the last lecture. So, uh, if you recall that we started with the thermodynamic problem being analyzed by two approaches, one is microscopic approach, other is macroscopic, right. And then we also uh, looked at various concepts and definitions which are essential to understand the gamut of thermodynamic because those are the language one has or the word terminologies one has to be uh, you know uh, keep that in mind. And we looked at system and surrounding and then system and surrounding together we call it as a universe. I also emphasize giving an example that to what you call it as a surrounding. I, if you remember that I took a example of uh, a hot tea and then I told tea cup and then I told like nearby wherever its properties will be changing due to the heat transfer from the uh, hot tea to the surrounding then only that region will consider as a surrounding not very far away. And later on we move to the uh, what you call the properties right. If you remember that we looked at whenever system will be interacting with the surrounding then it will be also the properties will be changing. Of course, before that we looked at various kinds of systems right system can be divided into three categories. Am I right? One is open system, closed system and isolated system. The closed system is also known as the control mass system where mass will not be changing during the interaction between the system and surrounding. However, there will be change of or interaction of energy interactions right between the system surrounding. And <coughs> question arises like how to choose that, when to choose and open system where the mass will be also changing during the uh, its interaction or the system interaction with the surrounding. I took an example of the uh, geyser what you, you use in your winter days for getting hot water bath am I right. So, I mean in that case the water will be entering into the geyser and some water will be going out depending upon whenever you are using right. So, therefore, the mass is changing and so also the heat interaction which will be uh, you know uh, taking place between system surrounding. Then I moved into uh, what you call a concept what you call property and we talk about properties and then thermodynamic properties. If you look at thermodynamic properties are different than the other properties of the matter right and we told ok like the pressure, temperature, volume, uh, internal energy, enthalpy, entropy these are all thermodynamic properties what we will be dealing with and wherever there is a interaction between the system and surrounding then one has to look at these properties and the change in properties right. And what we call how we will know whether it is a you know uh, property or not it may be a characteristic it may be a variable but it is not a property of the system. So, for that we told that it should be exact differential right there we stopped over. If you look at properties is very important and uh, let me just quote from Lord Kelvin who was uh, uh, told that when you can measure what you are speaking about and express it in number you know something about it, but when you cannot measure it when you cannot express it number your knowledge is of a meagre and unsatisfactory kind. It may be beginning of knowledge, but you have scarcely in your thoughts and advanced to the stage of science. That means whenever you talk about science the measurement comes into picture and whenever your measurement comes into picture then you know you will have to measure the properties of a system right is not it. So, therefore, it is very important to identify the properties of the system 
and how it is changing during its interaction with the surrounding. So, uh, if you look at uh, what we did, we did basically we took a property is a function of x and y, then we looked at dp is equal to dou p by uh, dou x when y is constant into dx plus dou p by dou y when x is constant into dy is equal to a dx plus b dy. If you look at what is that a, a is nothing but this term right, this term. So, uh, and then this condition has to be satisfied dou a by dou y uh, when x is constant equal to dou b by dou x is equal to y is constant. This is a mathematical form, but if you look at what is the meaning, meaning is that if you look at x is constant, if x is constant that means what? That means in this plane, if you look at this is the plane and if you take dou a by dou y right, that means change in this, how it is happening? The slope is here right, that is corresponding to this term. And when I say that y is constant, that means this plane right and dou b by dou y and uh, sorry dou b by dou x basically you know it is changing with respect to x direction and this constant. So, both are in the same point. So, therefore, it is an exact property. So, this is the uh, what you call physical interpretation I have uh, shown you so that you can have a feel. You might have used it, but you may not have that feel right. This thing you might have used in your mathematics class right, am I right? So, but however, one has to understand what is the meaning of it. So, let us take an example like how we will use this uh, you know uh, condition to find out whether property, whether a, a, you know a variable is a property or not. So, let us say that differential for the volume, uh, volume means this is basically a volume per mole right specific volume we can call of a gas is given by different by following expression dv is equal to r by p dt minus rt by p square and dp where p is the pressure and t is the temperature r is the gas constant and we will have to find out whether this specific volume is a property or not right of course you might be knowing it is a property but we need to know mathematically whether it is right or wrong so, if you look at what we know basically d v is equal to a d t minus b d p, what is a? a is nothing but your r by p, am I right? What is b? b is equal to minus r t by p square. So, what we need to do? We will have to basically look at whether it is a point function or not and if it is a point function then we call it as a property otherwise no that means for that to know uh, whether it is a point function or not we have to satisfy this condition dou a by dou p when temperature remaining constant is equal to dou b by dou t when pressure remaining constant right that we will have to satisfy from this. So, what we will have to do we know this a we will have to differentiate with respect to p what it will come it will be minus r by p square when we differentiate this b term right and dou b by dou t p is equal to basically r by minus r by p square. So, therefore, this condition is satisfied hence it is a property right. So, by this uh, one can really understand what is the whether it is a property or not as certain whether a variable is a property or not. <coughs> so, let us uh, when we talk about these properties you know thermodynamic properties particularly then we will have to understand what kind of is it properties. We, it can be broadly classified into two categories. What are those? Can you people recall? One is intensive property, other is extensive property. So, what do you mean the, by the extensive property? That means, 
see when you talk about property in a thermodynamic sense it is basically property of the system right we are not distinguishing in there in the system itself so that extensive property will depend upon the extent of the system right that means it depends on the size of the system am i right so example will be mass volume total energy and other things right i will take an example which you people might be knowing right you know that whether this milk man who supplies us the milk in our home right it will be supplying in your also hostel uh, is aware about this extensiveness of the property or extensive property what it does he takes maybe 1 liter of milk and mix with half a liter of water then it becomes 1 and 1/2 liter of milky water but he is he sells it as a milk to you people am i right to us all of us am i right or wrong that means he knows that if i will divide this 1 and 1/2 liter into 1 liter and 1 liter after mixing it will be the what you call remaining same right or it will be remaining same volume wise volume wise remaining same or not it won't be it is 1 liter is a half liter so therefore that property is a extensive property let us take an example let us say let us say there is a cylinder which contains oxygen 1 kg of uh, mass and 1 meter cube and it is at temperature 300 kelvin and pressure of 100 kilo pascal right and there is another cylinder b which contains you know same oxygen 1 kg 1 meter cube and 300 kelvin and 100 kilo pascal what is a we allow it to interact with each other let's say there is a connector it is connected each other then it became a one system right if i call this is as a one system right volume and there is another i just join together or i connect through a tube with a valve kind of things let's say after that what happens it became like the what will be the volume then volume will be two times of that because 1 meter cube and 1 meter cube 2 meter cube and mass is 2 kg 1 kg plus 1 kg 2 kg whereas what happens to temperature temperature is remaining same and so also the pressure right and these properties which changes with the you know with addition of these two cylinder uh, you know and then it becomes extensive properties and the properties which won't change even if you add this you know then that is known as intensive properties right so uh, i will give an example right if i take some you know dal you know dal price is very high nowadays let's say harar ka dal right you know in the little bit okay so now i will mix the one is good quality dal and other is bad quality dal together right what will happen the quality will be will be changing right then that quality itself will be which property it will be extensive property but if i take the same varieties of dal right and mix 1 kilo and 1 kilo together it became 2 kilos then what will happen the quality is not changing because quality is same so therefore the quality became the intensive property whereas you know if you take the kg or the mass will be extensive property right that means how we will know that intensive property is basically independent of system size whatever the size it may be right it will be independent generally the pressure temperature density these are independent uh, uh, these are the properties which are independent of the system size so therefore we call it an intensive property and there will be another property which call it specific property just now in the last example we looked at the specific volume volume per unit mole and the volume per se is a an extensive property but the specific property 
which is specific volume for this example like uh, then it is an extensive uh, it is an intensive property ok specific property will be basically intensive property. So, uh, I mean if you look at uh, we will be using two term, terms one is V that is volume per unit mass that is if you look at SI unit will be meter cube per kg and there will be V cap some book you may find V bar people use that is V by N that is volume per unit mole right. And some place you may find volume per meter cube per uh, kilo mole kind of things that you can use. So, we will be using both intermittently in this course. So, let us look at pressure. So, uh, what do you mean by pressure? In a gas or in a fluid, either a gas or a liquid, we call it pressure basically force per unit uh, area or force exerted by a fluid per unit area. Am I right? So, if you look at the basically pressure will be uh, you know uh, force per unit area therefore, unit will be 1 what you call Newton per meter square we call it as a Pascal. So, 1 Pascal is equal to Newton per meter square and do have a feel what is this 1 Pascal means? it is a very very tiny number tiny pressure right 1 pascal is very tiny pressure why it is so if you look at 1 atmospheric pressure is equal to what 101325 pascal right that means 1 pascal will be what 1 pascal will be you know 1 over divided by this is a very very small and of course people some people call it as a bar bar basically one bar is equal to 10 power to 5 pascal and you know 10 power to 5 is a big number therefore people use either it as a 0 0.1 mega pascal or 100 kilo pascal and similarly one can think of using basically 1 kg f per centimeter square this in mks unit that is equal to 9.807 Newton per centimeter square. If you look at this is basically 98.07 kilo Pascal am I right? Because 10 power 3 is kilo. So, you can multiply 10 into this 9.8 point and this is equal to basically 0 0.9807 bar. If you look at this pressure also in express in terms of PSI pound per square inch right you might have noticed in the some pressure gauge right you have seen the pressure gauge or somewhere or in your uh, anywhere have you seen in some system also uh, we are using mostly SI unit but in some uh, industrial application people do use the uh, what you call FPS system that is pressure per square inch one atmospheric pressure will be equal to 14.7 psi pressure pound per square inch right so uh, if you look at that is generally in terms of the what you call um, in case of a fluid that is a gas or a liquid we talk about the pressure right in case of a solid we call it as a what suppose i am applying a force on a solid per unit area what do you call we call it as a stress right yes or no right and let us take an example like there is a person who is you know became uh, was very uh, you know up to mark kind of thing his weight is something 68 kg as per the height he was fine comfortable and then he is having what you call a feet area of 300 centimeter square and the force what will be applying you know due to his weight on the on his uh, on the earth or where he is standing is basically 0.23 kg per centimeter square right. But now he, he has taken lot of food and then became fat you know his weight has increased double almost let us say which is not the case generally and then you know it will be basically increasing the weight because his uh, what you call food area 
uh, will be remaining same. So, you can think of using that uh, this thing. So, that you know that uh, pressure what being applied by the same person is become twice of that what it was earlier because the mass has uh, because the mass has increased. So, gravitational force if you look at you know is uh, the same that is the m g right and then therefore, it is having, but here <coughs> we call is normal stress right we call it as a normal stress because it is applied perpendicular to the area of a chubby person is much greater than 1 feet of a slim person if it is a slim earlier the person sleep. Nowadays a lot of you know things are going on as to how to reduce the weight and you know kind of things because our people becoming more fat day by day right what it was not obesity is increasing like and uh, if you look at I just want to draw your attention maybe I will ask you a solution. So, what happened one uh, uh, you know small boy is carrying a you know a trunk which is having a very uh, tiny handle or a diameter of the handle is very small, but the weight is higher he is getting pain in his hand am I right because of what because of pressure right. And now you want to give a solution what you will give any idea any idea like so you know you are an engineer. So, you know the why it is happening he is saying I am getting pain I need relief you know. I remember like when I was a uh, you know kid going to the school we are having carrying a trunk uh, what you call uh, a box metal box and in that we used to carry the books not like your nowadays very fancy bag which you can hang on the back right. So, um, you know like if it is heavy then you will get and your hand will be you know getting pain and it became a. Uh, sometimes red color if you are carrying for a longer period of time we used to walk maybe 2 3 kilometers to go to school right ok. So, it will be uh, you know like a red color kind of things that means the pressure it is being subjected to high. So, what is the solution you are thinking of giving any solution see you know Indians are very good in jugad right. But I am not getting anything from you people. What is the immediate solution? See the what else say suppose you are having handkerchief ok you use a handkerchief and make it fold it many times whatever possible right. What you are doing by that you are basically increasing the area the force is same area you have increased. So, therefore, what happens the stress which will be developed on your finger or body whatever it is it will be reduced you are relieved am I right. So, simple you should apply how it is that is the very important thing. Similarly, an old man he is trying to cut with a knife uh, maybe a very uh, difficult uh, fruit or something to eat. So, he is finding difficulties and how he will uh, you know solve his problems. So, you think about it we will uh, I mean discuss maybe some other time. So, if you look at these are the pressure gauge what I have shown here right did you see any kind of pressure gauge this this is a basically pressure gauge where did you see cycle stand right. So, how does it work what is this did, did it you know uh, make you to think and then how it is functioning, how it is giving pressure and what kind of pressure it is right. So, if it is not exciting if you are not you know triggered by that then you know you are not looking it scientifically you are just looking like a layman you know. So, we will be uh, now see we will have to define also various kinds of pressure we will be handling right this is absolute pressure that is basically the actual pressure at a given position right and it will be uh, basically relative it will be major relative to the absolute zero pressure that we call it as absolute pressure. There will be gauge pressure right gauge pressure means the difference between the absolute pressure and the 
at local atmospheric pressure will be uh, basically known as the gaze, gaze pressure and most of the pressure measuring devices like what we use in our day to day life and engineering also that will be measuring the gaze pressure right. So, what the question I ask you that whatever the gaze you must have used or you might have looked at it particularly when you are giving the pressure or inflating your tire of the cycle or a car I think some of you might be knowing how to you know uh, drive the car and or motorbike right. So, this that pressure uh, all the time the person will be uh, you know giving the, or feeling the, your tire pressure he will be checking whether it is proper pressure or not am I right with that there will be a gauge. So, that will be measuring the gaze pressure and the pressure below the atmosphere is basically that vacuum pressure. So, if you look at this is your absolute vacuum or the P absolute is 0 and then the if I say that pressure is here this is the absolute pressure from here to there and atmospheric pressure is this much. So, the gauge pressure will be basically absolute pressure minus the atmospheric pressure what we give the gauge pressure. Gaze pressure. But whereas the vacuum pressure will be atmospheric pressure minus the absolute pressure, it will give you the vacuum pressure, right? So, so what we'll be dealing in this class or in this course that will be basically will be using the absolute pressure. Although we'll be measuring most of the time uh, what you call the uh, gauge pressure. Now we are discussing about pressure let me ask you a question like you must be feeling uh, very often your uh, or inflating your tire tire of your cycle bicycle am i right yes and you might be also maybe your uh, parents will be having car and they might be also uh, what you call giving the pressure to their tire kind of thing which pressure will be higher, which pressure will be lower and what will be the order of pressure? Can anybody any guess that car pressure in the tube of the car will be higher than the cycle pressure or the bicycle what we use in our campus or it will be other way around. What is your guess? Car pressure will be higher actually it is not ok. You please think about it why it is so, how it is so and why it is and you will I will tell you the you must not have looked at your tube or the tire on the wherever you are you know changing it you must go and check what is the pressure given there right. You will surprise to see you must not have noticed any of you have noticed you might have changed your tube or tire na, right. Yes or no bicycle not change use and throw am I right, but still then you will be changing or you change the cycle nowadays that is the you know <laughs> mode that you change you know use and throw, but still then you will be changing you just look at it the pressure will be something around uh, what you call uh, maybe something 85 to 115 psi it will be written in India also we are having the colonial overhang we are still using PSA, PSA means pounds per square inch ok. Now, we suppose the rear, rear wheel is there and the front wheel right. So, where pressure should be higher? That is a simple question ok. So, you think about this thing. So, whenever we talk about it we need to measure pressure. I told that there is a gauge which is being used let us look, look at that uh, this is a commonly used manometer you might have solved a lot of problem on manometer before uh, during your JE exam am I right. And it is uh, basically commonly used to measure a small to moderate pressure difference like here we will be measuring the pressure difference you can think of pressure difference as a gauge pressure you know you can think of or sometimes it will be and most of the uh, some of the manometric fluids 
are basically water, alcohol, oil kind of things, right. And um, we can also devise some uh, these things which will be helpful depending on the situations. For example, question is where you will use mercury, where you will use water, where you will use alcohol and that will be depend on the properties of these fluids, particularly the density. You know like mercury is having what? Higher density than the water and alcohol will be lower density, so also oil as compared to water, right. So if you consider one atmospheric pressure will be equal to how much of water head? Any idea? If you just calculate, it will be something around 10.3 meters of water head, right. So let us look at a, a, a tank which contains gas at a higher pressure which is connected to a U-tube manometer. This is just a simple glass tube with a graduation so that you can measure the height and this fluid because of pressure it is pushed these things, uh, the, this is a manometric fluid, right. And it has this level and you can say that difference between this uh, change, uh, you know, in the manometric fluid height due to this pressure is H. Right. So, I want to find out, connect this H because I can measure this height, right, and then connect and then calculate the pressure of the tank. So, what I will have to do? What I will have to do? I will, I can take, this is my reference, right, pressure. I can calculate what will be this height of that and then I know the manometric, you know, fluid density, right. Let us say this is the density of the fluid and then I know the this is a gravitational force is acting, right. So, I know that and what is the pressure, what is, is it some pressure is acting here? What pressure it will be acting? What pressure will be acting here at this point? P atmosphere, right. So, I can say that P atmosphere, right. So, I will do a balance, what I will do? that uh, P2 is equal to P atmospheric plus rho G H, this is pressure plus rho G H, right, it will be changing with respect to height because of, you know, gravity. <coughs> so, then I can find out very because I know this atmospheric pressure, I know the density of this rho is density of what? Density of manometric fluid and G is your gravity, uh, gravi uh, gra gravitational acceleration, right. And this gravitational acceleration will be changing with respect to height, am I right? Of course, manometric in the same uh, at, uh, is this thing we are considering. So, H is the height we can measure. Now, and then this P2 is same as that of the P. So, therefore, we are saying the tank uh, pressure will be same as that of the P1, right. So, now let us look at the measuring the pressure drop across a flow section, you know, in this device the flow is taking place and we have connected, uh, you know, with the station 1 with a manometer, right, this is U tube and also there is an incline, sometimes people call it incline manometer also, right. <coughs> and I need to measure the pressure between this point 1 or the station 1 and station 2, right. So, that is the thing we will have to and if you look at this is the height from here to this, this is your manometric fluid and this height is the change in the manometric fluid, right. And this manometric fluid must be different than that of the flowing fluid. Let us say if it is water, you know, if then it can be mercury or alcohol or some other things, right. Of course, it will be difficult to have alcohol. So, um, and if it is air, you can use here also water, right. And uh, let us look at, we will have to calculate, see if I look at this pressure P1 here and then what will be at this point? At this point what it will be? Pressure P1 plus rho 1, rho 1 is the density of the flowing fluid, G and A plus H, this is the height A 
plus h at this point. So, this pressure will be same as that of same as that of here at this point and then <coughs> what will say you will have to go to this point that is rho 2 g h this term right and minus rho 1 g a. So, that is the nothing but your p 2. So, if you look at this rho 1 g a 1 can be cancel it out with this right. So, therefore, uh, p, p 2 uh, sorry p 1 minus p 2 will be nothing but rho 2 minus rho 1 g h right. So, the change in density will be uh, you know taken care and the g h h of course, we know the height and you can find out what will be the uh, what you call change in pressure between the station 1 and 2. So, uh, what I would like to say that you will be looking at this kind of uh, the uh, what you call uh, pressure major uh, pressure you know some kind of manometer and other things will be giving you some problem in your uh, uh, tutorial classes to solve you and um, also you might have done this kind of things earlier maybe you can recapitulate this. So, let us look at the other pressure measurements what one can think of. Of course, uh, it is uh, not very much related to thermodynamics, but I have given so that you know you can think about something engineering aspect of. The gauge what I uh, you were uh, you might have seen in your cycle store or maybe car uh, wherever you are um, inflating your a tube of the car then you know you will be using a Borden kind of tube which consists of a hollow metallic you know tube which is closed at this end right. Of course, there is a various varieties like you know C type, spiral type, two state type, helical type all are same this comes under the Borden gauge or Borden tube. And what happens when the pressure is, is uh, let us say it will increase here. So, what happened to the tube? the tube is having a cross section you know of a uh, what you call uh, rectangular cross section or elliptical cross section you can say here. It is not a circular you know when the pressure is higher it will be changing and it will be change changing its position also right it will be inflated and trying to be more circular kind of things and then this will move and this point will be connected to your needle there will be gear and pinion arrangement which you can open you can see yourself. Then that will change because there will be change in that when at the initial condition it will be state that means the pressure is 0 that means with respect to atmosphere and all this atmospheric pressure will be acting here also right. So, this will be giving you gas pressure and this uh, whenever there is a deflection it will be change into that and it will give. So, this is a mechanical kind of pressure gauge right which will having certain inertia, but it can be used for a very high pressure it can go to very high pressure. Of course, there are several to in order to improve its sensitivity there is a spiral type twisted tube and helical type there are several varieties kind of things that people have developed. And uh, however, in I mean maybe last uh, 70 or 80 years you know electronics has come into a very big picture and so that you know um, uh, people can develop you know change the uh, convert this pressure effect into the electrical effect right such as the change in voltage resistance and capacitance because there is a change in the this thing you can use a diaphragm and then there will be change in that deflection you can convert into the voltage or the resistance or capacitance then you can measure the pressure very easily. And this uh, pressure of course, this is known as transducer pressure transducer kind of things and are smaller and faster right. And they are more sensitive reliable and precise than their mechanical counterpart, but however, I feel that mechanical one is more reliable and rugged ok. Whereas, the electrical or the electronics kind of things 
you know in our uh, place where the humidity is very high and the temperature is very high you know those are uh, their life is very small and then you know I always feel the mechanical will be more rugged in our conditions. Beside this there is a strain gas pressure transducer work by having a diaphragm and uh, is a deflect between two chamber open to pressure input let us say if it is gas pressure atmospheric pressure and the input pressure. And there is a another kind of things which is uh, being used nowadays very much is the solid state pressure transducer which uh, works in the principle that you know whenever you press or you apply the pressure then there will be a change in the you know crystalline substance and then it will give you the electrical uh, kind of things energy and mechanical pressure and that was uh, known as piezoelectric transducer right that is being used and it is quite uh, you know it can take a higher amplitude of the pressure and also the larger frequency it can sustain. Therefore, in your IC engine you know IC engine piston cylinder engines what you use in your car there we want to measure pressure we will have to use piezoelectric kind of transducers. So, uh, what I would uh, you know like to tell you is that let us say this pressure, pressure also is uh, very important uh, this thing if you go that if you go to the higher altitude if you go to the sea level kind of things. Let us say uh, you are having the what you call <coughs> in the sea if you want to get into down what will happen to the pressure, what kind of pressure will be experiencing right, am I right. And if you look at the problem wise it is a quite complicated because the density of the liquid of the water in a sea will be changing am I right, because of what salt right, is not it. So, salt will be there, the water density will be changing, there might be gradient and it might vary. And what happens to if you go to the very deep sea? Of course, it is very difficult for man to go to the very deep sea with the modern technology one can go. Now, the g also will be changing, the gravitational that wherever we are you know talking about pressure, g comes into picture, am I right? So, the g is changing along the altitude and so also the what? the sea depth or the uh, you know inside the earth also it goes changing right. But the g will be not really changing much right, it will be changing something maybe uh, 0 0.1 uh, you know like or kind of 1 percent of the g average g what we take 9.81 meter per second square. So, along with you know the height it will be changing very less let us say for something for one uh, you know like one percent will be changing maybe 100 uh, meters kind of things. And therefore, we will be taking the constant right, but what will happen to the you know the gravitational acceleration at the core of the earth any idea just think about it right whether it is changing or whether it will be you know because as you go down the g increases from the sea level to the uh, you know from the sea top level to the downwards towards the earth center. So, it will be increasing, but what happens at the center as you go up what happens the g will be decreasing am I right when you go to the higher altitude g will be decreasing am I right or wrong ok. So, but the change is not much we would not be considering here and uh, I will stop over here then we will uh, discuss in the next class about the energy and what are the forms of energy and other things. Thank you very much.